Hello, here's a quick video on something you may run into in your business career uh, and hopefully you play it correctly. Uh, also important for policymakers. So let's say we had two mechanics in a small town, right? So let's uh, think back to the types of monopolies. Uh, if there was only one, they would have a geographic monopoly, but there's actually two, right? And so uh, firms you know they probably know each other because it is a small town here's a motto Arizona right a little teeny tiny town uh, close to Nogales just north of uh, of Nogales south of Tucson <clears throat> let's say that there are two two mechanics and the one mechanic says to the other one uh, hey let's stop competing on price uh, let's both set the same price so if uh, you know a tire change or uh, alternator repair whatever it is we'll, we'll just agree on the same prices set of prices right so if if they do that they're acting like a monopoly uh, and they would both make more higher profits because there's a very inelastic demand for uh, car repair especially in a small town right you couldn't get away with that in Tucson because you, you know if somebody did did that you just go to the next uh, mechanic over but in small town you could probably get away with it well if firms agree and discuss on new prices this is illegal Okay, so don't do this. Uh, the term for this is collusion. It's the economic uh, term for it. When those two firms join together and collude, those are called cartels. Okay, so do not do this in the United States. You will make more profit, but acting like a monopoly violates antitrust law. It's important for you to know that. Okay, so again, collusion, setting of prices by rival firms, and the cartel are those rival firms. Okay, it could just, it doesn't have to be two, it could be a larger number. Um, but when this happens, if uh, if Justice Department finds out about it or state re regulators find out about it, you can have to pay fines and uh, can lose your business license. This happens a lot in the dentistry industry because uh, consumers don't don't have perfect information. They don't know what's wrong with their teeth. They don't know how much the next uh, dentist is over, and uh, often. Um, They'll, they'll get caught because dent, dental regulators are looking for that sort of thing. Now, you <clears throat> may have heard this for, this term before, drug cartels, and it actually comes from economics, right? The, the firms don't compete on price. The uh, the firms are, are essentially setting the same price. Uh, the way they compete is through violence, right? So there's a considerable externality um, with that. Okay, so that's, that's the origin of all that. Now, there is a famous cartel you need to know about. Um, and in the United States, it's illegal. In the EU, it's it's illegal too. But the international cartel is called OPEC. Okay, OPEC is pretty famous cartel. It's all of these uh, dark colored countries here, and that's when they joined. They essentially uh, sat down in 1960 and said, "We want to um, make oil more expensive because we want to help the environment." Right. So they said from the environmental standpoint. But what they really meant was, we want to raise the price because uh, we're in this highly competitive situation where the price uh, keeps going lower and lower and we're beating each other up because the consumer doesn't care about where the oil came from they just care about the lowest price so uh, they sat down and they uh, they want to indirectly set prices okay so every six months they get together and they, they go to Vienna Austria there's a picture of it you can see all of their flags there's the OPEC logo and everything uh, and they sit down and they say well if the price of per barrel is fifty dollars we want to increase that what we're going to do is we're all going to cut production. So these are called OPEC production cuts. You'll you'll see them. Perhaps you've even heard about them so far. Um, but that's what they're that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to push up the equilibrium price of oil. Okay. Now this doesn't always work as effectively as as non-economists tend to think it does. Okay. So if we look at this, first of all, uh, the United States, Mexico, Canada, Russia. These are all major oil producers in England too, uh, which are not part of OPEC, right? So if OPEC increases the price or causes the price to go up a little bit, uh, then those countries are going to produce more, okay? Uh, and they don't, want to, they don't want it to go up too much because then their own cartel members might, might have an incentive to cheat on the rest of the cartel. Okay, so if I'm, uh, you know, Saudi Arabia is a big, big oil producer, I, I want that price to go up. But if I'm a littler country, uh, I Actually, I like the price to go up, but then I'm, I also have an incentive to cheat on the cartel. And this actually happens all the time. So OPEC will kick out members or sanction members that are cheating on the cartel. The big producers won't do it, but the smaller producers uh, will. And then furthermore, if they push the price up too high uh, in this new market of fracking and uh, you know Arctic drilling and all of that, um, international firms are just going to go find more oil. So it, it, they may... Um, undermine their own efforts uh, to do that, right? So 
this is uh, some some data uh, of when OPEC is uh, so if they raise the quota um, it means that they're allowing more oil to be produced and if they cut the quota it means they're they're wanting less oil to be produced okay so you can see what they've done there uh, this is their exceeding their, the cut this is because groups are cheating on each other okay or the, the different countries are cheating because those smaller countries have an incentive to to do that and finally uh, this is a you know an interesting thing to think about uh, in international politics so Libya has kind of an expensive government it's kind of falling apart uh, 184 dollars is what they need the price of oil to be to, to balance their budget right so they're, they're they're kind of in trouble there here's Iran so let's say an American president wanted to uh, mess with Iran they would maybe encourage through subsidies or tax breaks uh, to produce more oil from American firms because this this should knock down the price of price of oil and, and hurt a country that might be whose government might be hostile to the United States right uh, another problem for Venezuela right to sort things out uh, how do they get that sorted so uh, this has been the cartels and uh, and OPEC and how difficult they are to keep going